All right, everybody have a seat. Jurors, welcome back. And remember, in the middle of cross-examination, Ms. Ramsey was about to show Mr. Vorpagel some items. Let's do it. These are all phone calls, correct? No, these are text messages. The text messages... It doesn't say what was said in the text messages. It just says incoming and outgoing. It just tries to speak up, both of you. Those are phone calls. And the content is over there. Okay. I'm scrolling up. Okay, I'm finished. Okay. The new text messages between you and Mr. Vassal on Saturday um, that is from my smartphone. I had uh, more than one phone at the time. What was your other phone number? I don't recall the name of it. It was a disposable phone. But do you know the number, sir? I do not recall the number. Okay. Did you ever talk about that with the police? Yes. Did you ever see messages or phone calls from that phone? I haven't seen any messages or phone calls from any of my phones. Huh? So you're telling us that Mr. Fasada, although he texted you a lot of times on this number, we see text messages about him coming by, about trying to get something for you, about exchanging money with um, Lucas Sukas. Those are all on this phone. I didn't see any messages that you just showed me from him on that phone. On that day. On that day. Right, on that day, right? Correct. But these other conversations that we've talked about with Mr. Rosada were on this phone, right? Yes. Okay, and so your testimony is that on this particular day, the text messages were on a different phone that we don't have. I guess so, I mean, I had three phones at the time. And those messages you just showed me are from one phone. Well, in fact, sir, you were with Sean Henry on this day, right? Yes. Okay. And in fact, sir, when you first spoke to the police um, on the 6th, also on the 8th as well, do you remember telling them that you had gone to Old Florida Bar and Grill? Yes. Okay, and that was on Saturday, right? Uh, either Friday or Saturday, I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you remember what Sean's phone number was? No. Did you have it in your phone as Sean Henry? Yes, I believe so. Okay. And so I'm going to show you some text messages that did occur on the 4th. number. You don't remember his number. Okay, so I'm going to show you this phone record, page 15, and starting right here at number 46. All right, I'm going up. Okay, can I see the lawyers at the bench? And so as before, the content is over here. And would you just read those messages for February 4th? Just read them to yourself, sir. To yourself. And when you're done, look up so we know you're finished. Okay, now wait for the next question. So, Mr. Borpagel, did you and Sean Henry 
actually contact Mr. Posada in the evening hours, eight, nine o'clock at night, seven o'clock, and talk to Mr. Posada about meeting up with you at a bar? No, I don't think so. So what is Old Florida Bar and Grill? It's a restaurant and bar in Jupiter. Okay, and that is the place that you originally told the police that you had gone to? Yes. Okay, and so you say you don't think so. We're talking about Friday evening, right? Saturday. I don't think so. I don't remember going there Saturday. I don't February know. February 4th, 2017. I don't remember if I was there Saturday or Friday. You don't remember? No. Do you remember talking to Mr. Vasada about meeting you at that bar? No. Okay. So your testimony here today is that Mr. Vasada came to your home at what time, sir? It was sometime in the evening, Saturday. Sometime in the evening is a big window. When was it, sir? Was it 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock? I don't recall the exact time. You don't recall the exact time. Was it dark outside? I believe so. Okay, so it was definitely after 6 o'clock, correct? Yes. Okay, and do you remember, sir, that on Saturday you were out and about to several locations that day? Uh, yes, that sounds right. And you were in communication with Sean Henry, Brandy, as well as Kelly? I believe so. Okay. And they had, they came to your house on Saturday, right? Yes. All right. And your testimony is that they were not there at the time that Mr. Vasada came? No. Okay. Do you remember texting with Brandy about coming and sitting by the fire pit and telling her that you had beer there? I don't remember that text message. Okay, and I'll show it to you. What day is this? This is on February 4th, Saturday. Okay, take a look at that, sir. Can you direct him right to it? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to read that to yourself. And after you're done reading it, I want to know, does it refresh your recollection? Yes or no? Does it refresh your recollection, sir? No, it doesn't. It doesn't refresh your recollection? No. Okay. Did you have a fire put going Saturday night? Uh, yes. Okay. And, sir, your phone number um, at that time, do you remember that number, sir? Yes. Okay, what was it? 561. Five two nine seven zero one three. Okay, do you remember that the girls did come to your house on Saturday night? I don't recall if they were there or not. Well, did you tell the police that, sir? Yes, I may have. Okay, so you don't know if it's true now? I just don't remember if they were there or not. So you don't know if what you told the police was true? 
objection argument. Just rephrase the question for me. Okay. Were you and Sean at your house that night? Yeah, Sean was at my house all weekend. Okay, Saturday night and Saturday night, were you at a fire pit? Yes. Okay, so there was in fact a fire pit burning at your house on Saturday night? Yes. Okay, and you did in fact go to Kirby's earlier in the day? On Sunday. On Sunday, okay, Old Florida Bar and Grill on, on Saturday? Either Friday or Saturday. Okay. And then you had the fire pit Saturday and Sunday? Yes. And do you agree that Saturday was February 4th, 2017? Yes. Okay. So if Mr. Vasada came to your house, it would have been before the girls came? Yes. And they left in the very early morning of Sunday? They came by Sunday morning around five or six in the morning. I was still sleeping. Okay, and they came into your room, right? Yes. And then they later left? Yes. Right? And that Sunday was the day that you were supposed to hook up with them and go to lunch with them? Yes. Right, but you didn't? No, Sean and I went to another restaurant. Okay. Was Saturday also the day that you and Sean went out on the boat? We may have gone on a boat Saturday. Okay, for several hours, right? I believe so. All right, before you went to Old Florida Bar and Grill? Yes. Okay. And when you were on the boat, were you also in communication with Joey Keating? Yes, I believe it was his boat we were on. And when you went to Old Florida Bar and Grill, was Joey Keating also there? Yes. Okay. And this was the individual whose house had been robbed of $14,000 of marijuana? Yes. Okay. Now, you told me that you had some other phone numbers, right? Yes. Okay. And if I asked you, sir, if that alternate phone number could be 732-546-0765. Does that refresh your recollection? No. Okay. Were you aware that your number was sometimes stored in Mr. Versada's phone as Uncle Charlie? No. And also Charlie? No. Okay. If I asked you if that number was 231-330-2679, is that the number, sir? My number or his number? Your number, your alternate phone number, sir. I don't think so. You don't think so? You just don't know? No. And you usually. don't know Mr. Um, Kasuko's phone number? No. Okay. Do you recall, sir, that late in the evening of actually Thursday, February 2nd, 2017, having phone conversations with Mr. Visada? I don't recall them. You don't recall? No. Do you remember, sir, talking to him about Luke Kasukas? Uh, yes, I had talked to him about Luke on a few occasions. Okay, and was did that include Thursday night and some phone calls? It may have, but I don't recall. Okay, and you told us on direct examination that Sometimes you would talk to Mr. Vasada and he would try to get information for you, but the information never panned out. Yes. And you were clearly aware that he was in communication with Mr. Kasukas. Yes, that was in my belief. Right. And in fact, sir, isn't it true that on Thursday, February 2nd, 2017, that you had a series of phone calls with Mr. Vasada where he was going back and forth in phone calls between you and Mr. Kasukas. I was unaware he was also contacting Luke at the same time. Did he try to resolve the problems that you had with Mr. Kasukas? No. No? No. Okay. What were those conversations about then, sir? 
I don't remember exactly, but it would have been something to the effect of me trying to find out where Luke lived. And for five minutes, it would just be you asking, where does he live, where does he live, where does he live? I don't recall the conversation. So you don't recall anything that Mr. Posada said? No. All right, so, so we go to February 5th of 2017 and on that day you've told us that the girls came over early in the morning right yes and then you were supposed to meet them for lunch yes and you came home later in the evening right that's correct with Sean yes and you and Sean were in the house for a while yes Okay, and at some point, John Benzeal came over. Yes. And you've told us that you drove him home. That's correct. Okay, and before you drove Mr. Benzeal home, had he actually called you and asked you about coming over to see you? I believe John had called me, and I told him he could come over. Okay, and... You're telling us that that actually occurred in the late evening hours? Yes. Okay. Um, and you took him home, you said, about 15 minutes before the shooting happened? Yes. And at that same time that you arrived back from taking John Benzeal home, you actually, uh, Kelly and Brandy showed up, right? That's correct. Okay. And Kelly and Brandy, you had already texted with them and asked them to bring you cigarettes that night, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you, sir, some phone calls and text messages between you and Kelly and Brandy that day. And I'd like you to just look at the content, but also look of your interactions with these individuals. And you can start here. So all the way through that page. Okay. Do you see one there that is actually has a number on it that says 108 and says from Brandy? Sorry, I don't see 108. Okay. Yes, I see it. And that's what you talked about when you said you were texting with them and asked them to pick up cigarettes and beer? Yes. Okay. And that says February 5th, 2017, 7.02 p.m., UTC 5. Do you know what UTC 5 is? No. Okay, did you in fact text with Kelly and Brandy at about 6 o'clock that night and ask them to pick up cigarettes and beer? Yes. Okay, and they came over shortly after that, correct? I don't know if they came over shortly after that or not. <coughs> Brandy at 7.03 UTC time, which is 6 o'clock, right? And 
we have text messages about the cigarettes up here at 719, which would be 619. <coughs> Phone calls from Kelly at 738, which would be 638. Okay. Did the police talk to you about the video and the receipt? from the store where the cigarettes and beer were bought? Yes, I mentioned it. Okay, and that they were there at approximately 7.30? Yes. All right, and they came right to your house after that? I don't think they came directly to my house. And so, do you have any idea or did you have any communication with them? between 7.30 p.m. and 10 o'clock you, when you're saying that they showed up? Yes, I'm sure I did. Okay. And I can let you look at your records, sir. So it is possible, sir, that they were there for a couple hours before this happened? No. My friend John was there, and him and Brandy weren't getting along at the time, so Brandy would not have been there at the same time he was. But you don't have any specific recollection of was when Mr. Venzeal was there? I don't know exactly when he showed up, but I left to take him home about a little after 10. And that's based on what, sir? Not something you're watching on TV? No. Right? Just your memory? Just my memory. Okay. And so you go when, when, when Kelly and Brandy show up, they come in the house and you tell us that you do some cocaine, you make some drinks, you smoke some marijuana. Yes. Right? Because you had all of those things in your house. Yes. Right? And originally you told the police, however, that it was Kelly that brought the cocaine there. She had brought some cocaine of her own. Despite the fact that there was a bowl of cocaine there and she had been there the night before. Yes. So she bought from a different dealer? Yes. And you go out back and you've indicated that the four of you are sitting around the fire. There's nothing loud going on. Correct. Right? And you are positioned in a way that you are looking toward the back of the yard. Yes. Right? Where that fence is that separates the yard from the canal. Yes. And at some point you hear what sounds like a string of firecrackers. That's correct. Right? And then you see muzzle flash. Yes. Okay. Today, you told the state that you were uncertain of how many people were there. Right? How many people I had at my house or no, how many how shooters many there were? how many shooters were there. Yes. Okay. But originally, you had told the police that you were certain that it was three. Yes. Okay. And in fact, as late as May 20th of this year, just a few weeks ago, you sat down with me to give a sworn discovery deposition. Yes. Right? And you actually told me that when the individuals left the house, as you've described in your direct, and go into the driveway, that you saw two people carrying one person. What I saw was three, two or three figures, and one of them appeared to be helping the other. Okay, and would you look, sir, at your deposition? I think you still have it up there. At page 128.
It's right at the top of the page, sir. Yes, I see it. Okay. That they were carrying somebody out. Yes. Okay. That's what it looked like to you closer in time to the time that this happened, right? In your early statements to the police. Yes. All right. Um, you also told the police that in the backyard you could actually see three individuals and one of them was closer to the pool, one was a little bit more to the right when you're looking at them and still another further right. Yes. Okay. And that they were moving and approaching when you saw the muzzle flashes. Yes. Okay, and you described in your initial statement, sir, that two of the individuals you believed were black and one was white. Yes. Okay, and one individual you described as being bulkier in size, having gold teeth, having dreadlocks, and being tattooed and being of a heavier build than the others. Yes, I don't know about being tattooed, but one of them was much larger than the others. And you believe that that individual was Luke Kasukas? Yes. I mean, you told the police that. Yeah. Okay, and so then Luke Kasukas would be an individual that you have previously described as um, a mixed race, Hispanic and black, or light-skinned black. I'm not sure of his exact race, but yes, he looks Hispanic or mixed black. That's what he looks like to you? Yes. Right? And so Luke Kasukas is the individual that you were actually working for a couple weeks before this to try to locate him in order to murder him. Yes. And that individual that you have described as having the dreadlocks and the gold teeth and the, and the darker skin is the individual that you believed had the larger weapon with the bigger muzzle flash. I don't know who had which weapon. don't take any offense. Let's just go ahead and do it right now. What time is it? 11.51. Okay. So if I ask you all to be back at 1, you can do it? 1 o'clock? If, if you guys are a little late, relax. If, like I said, if you're getting your bill, and don't worry. We're here for you. So 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, don't talk about the case. You now know a lot. Don't Google Facebook, Twitter, nothing at all. Please, please, please. Follow Deputy Dunkley out the back and gather up at the glass doors at 1 o'clock. Okay. So we'll reconvene at 1 o'clock. I'll let the deputies take care of Mr. Warpagel here, and deputies will come and take care of Mr. Posada, keep them separate.